Are you thinking of studying medicine or becoming a doctor in the UK and trying to figure out the steps in between? Keep watching to learn more. Hi and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Wesley and I'm a recent secondary school graduate and Cambridge Medic offer holder. So applying to university in general is already a very tricky process and it's even harder if you're applying for medicine. For 2021, you has received approximately 29,000 medicine applications for around 9,500 places. So that's some tough competition. Knowing this, having good grades simply isn't enough. It's very important to prepare thoroughly and get every step correct, which is what we'll be talking about in this video. So if you have any basic idea about the UK system, then you'll know that for medicine applicants, you can only apply to a maximum of four medical schools and one safety choice that can't be medicine, vet or dentistry. However, it's best to apply to something related like biomedical sciences since you can only use the same personal statement and you could probably try to apply for a transfer in some unis or attempt graduate medicine. If you don't already know that, then please check out my UCAS prep video first. There are a total of around 45 medical schools and 166 universities across the whole UK. So technically you can pick any 4 out of 45 and one more out of 166. So you have a bunch of combinations for an extremely important choice. Essentially, you want to scout all the possible options and note down their features and differences, especially the factors that matter to you the most, and then rank the different unis based on that. Be sure to be strategic with your selection and pick unis with different probabilities of getting in. Instead of just going for the most perfect ones or the easiest ones, since while you're chasing for the ideal education, you'll get the same qualifications and have the chance to become a doctor at the end of any medical course. So you probably already know that you can only apply to either Oxford or Cambridge if you wish to. So never both of them. And I also wouldn't recommend putting like medicine for Oxford and biomedical sciences for Oxford in your safety choice as that would defeat the whole point of it being a safety choice. I have a whole separate video about picking the right uni for you. So be sure to check that out as well. Hi guys, it's me again. So I just realized that I forgot something that's kind of important for my international student community out there. So if you're a home applicant, you can just skip this part. And so for international students, the medical schools have a quota for international medical places. And for example, for Cambridge, that's around 21 places. And for Oxford, there's a bit less. And it's based off the government set percentage. So this means that you're kind of facing more competition uh, in that sense. So uh, you can adjust your uni choices based on that. So in general, I would recommend picking more unis that are above your uh, local medical school backups. But if you really want to study medicine in the UK, then uh, some of your choices should be those with uh, significantly less competition just to increase your chances of getting in. There's more about this in my uni picking video and it covers all the specifics that international students should be aware of. So go check that out. Course differences are something that you should consider when picking your unis, but it's such an important feature that I decided to make a separate section for it. While medical schools are regulated by the GMC to provide certain content, and you will usually get the same qualifications at the end, the type of course and teaching style that you choose will offer very different experiences. I'll be talking about this based on three different criteria. The teaching style, course direction, and structure. First, let's talk teaching style. So according to the British Medical Association, there are a total of six different course styles, but essentially there are two major ones, which are traditional and integrated. As far as I know, the only schools that use the traditional style are Oxford and Cambridge. So what that means is that they teach you the preclinical sciences and the theoretical part first, before introducing you to the clinical course and the practical setting. As a result, these courses tend to be more academic focused, which Oxbridge are, and since they are the only two schools that use this style, it also just comes with the signature supervisions and tutorials. I feel like I keep talking about this on my channel, but these small group topic focused teaching sessions are such an integral part to this teaching style. Since the way it works really helps promote the academic focus and the understanding of the course in such a unique way. If you want, I could do a whole separate video about applying to Cambridge Medicine. Since I can go on and on about that, um, just let me know in the comments. The other style is the integrated style and as the name suggests provides clinical experience very early on in the course and teaches the clinical track and the preclinical track side by side. Instead of supervisions, these schools use things like PBL and EBL or a combination of these. The most widely used is PBL 
problem-based learning, which asks students to learn by asking questions and finding answers about a case. This is typically the style used in most other medical schools, but in any medical school, you still expect to attend normal lectures and dissections, etc. Next is the course direction. Now, this is rather abstract and subjective. There isn't a clear way to identify this because personally, I think any medical course is formed by a ratio of academia to clinical. So as an example, Oxbridge is generally recognized to have the highest academia ratio. In terms of the focus of the course, they really emphasize on the importance of research and basic sciences. I've heard that they regularly include latest research content inside the course on top of the things that are required by the GMC. Other schools will of course have varying ratios, but that's a really subjective measure. And within any school, the clinical focuses will also be slightly different. Hence, the resources allocation might also differ. If you have specific interests within medicine, then you can dig a bit more for extra information to help you decide. Finally, we have structure. Now, obviously, there are differences between schools that teach using systems and schools using topics. But the greatest difference in structure, I believe, includes the number of years of the course. Some schools have a prior foundational year that teaches you basic preclinical sciences, but the more common ones are five-year and six-year courses. Usually, the difference between is the extra year of intercalation in year three, which allows you to study a different discipline or conduct a project. In Oxbridge, that's compulsory, and you usually study some Something related to gain your Bachelor of Science degree and in some cases that might be extended for you to study a master's, something completely different or maybe even the MB PhD program in Cambridge. In other medical schools an intercalated degree might be optional and some might not even offer that. So how do these three factors affect your choice? So maybe you're someone that's interested in the research side of medicine. In that case, you might pick a traditional course or something with a higher academia to clinical ratio. And maybe that school even offers an intercalated year for you to do further research in a specialty that you're interested in. Or if you're more interested in the hands-on stuff of medicine, then you could pick an integrated course with PPL and it's more clinical focus also finishes in five years. So that was a lot about course differences since the video is dedicated to the topic. But now that that's out of the way, we can then move on to something that everyone's worried about and that's predicted grades. In a way, this also affects your university choice because you usually want your predicted grades to be above the typical offer threshold in order to more likely secure a conditional offer. The requirements usually range from AAA to A star A star A and the subject requirements vary from uni to uni. Most of them will need you to study chemistry, sometimes biology, and some of them even stress that all sciences are preferred or required. Do be aware that the final offer condition can be different from the so-called typical offers. Since it's at the discretion of the university, it can get as high as 4A stars for those with 4A levels, or even as low as 1 or 2Bs. So when you apply for UCAS, make sure that the majority of choices you pick have a typical offer requirement, not the lower bar, which your predicted grades meet. And now we're back to the horrible 4,500 character essay that describes a life journey. So if you're like me and you've Googled some medic personal statement samples, then you're probably wondering how they got such impressive content. I go into a lot more detail in my personal statement video, but in this video, I want to talk about something more specific to medicine. First off, most medical schools will either require or prefer some sort of medically related work experience, which obviously I recommend you to put into your personal statement if you have any, or start searching now if you don't. But most importantly, I urge you not to treat this as a task that you tick off for your application, but really do it for the knowledge and skill that you learn from the experience. This is for two reasons. Firstly, the whole point of them requiring this is that they want to accept people who really know what they're applying for and to know that they're up for the task. And secondly, I think it really shows on your application if you're doing it out of your love for the subject and for the learning experience, instead of doing it out of necessity. You obviously have the choice to apply for paid work experience programs, but there are a lot of free and more affordable options out there. For example, so you can keep an eye out for hospital programs or programs that your school will promote, or take the initiative and contact your local GP to ask for such experience. And there are also some free or more affordable online options out there. Now we're ready to apply. If you've gotten this far, then you really should know that you submit your application through UCAS. 
Once you're ready to apply, you should have all your documents ready. So your buzz code, your reference, your predicted grades, your personal statement, your financial documents, and any sort of identification. Since you're applying to medicine, be sure to fill in the form and submit it before the 16th of October. Again, please don't leave everything to the last minute, especially since there's always a chance for the system to fail due to overcapacity. If you're applying to Cambridge, there's the additional My Cambridge application form that you have to submit. And it just asks some questions about you to help them with the evaluation and the interview. The important part is the optional additional personal statement which I highly recommend you to utilize to your advantage by writing something like why Cambridge and why you are suited for Cambridge and such. This year, if I'm not mistaken, the deadline is on the 23rd of October and you'll typically receive instruction to fill in the form after you submit your application to UCAS. So again, applying early is for the better. For medicine, you can expect two admission tests, so the BMAT and the UCAT, which you may be required to do just one or both, depending on which unis you're applying to. For details, please refer to my other video, which talks about the booking, key dates, and general tips, etc. I'm in no position to talk about the UCAT, and I would talk about the BMAT, but this would make this a very, very, very long video, so I'll save that for another time. All right, so obviously you're going to have to wait a while after submitting your application to know if you have an interview offer. So yeah, I forgot something again. So before you head into your interview, you should have an interview offer. And that interview offer is given based on all the other factors mentioned. So your personal statement, your admission test score, your reference letter and your predicted grades, uh, etc. And so every medical school has a different uh, criteria for giving you that interview offer sometimes they uh, view your application holistically and sometimes they have different weightings for different uh, aspects of your application and you can check that out in most of the faculty websites which is why you should build your application strategically especially the part about the predicted grades because if you usually don't meet your uh, typical offer uh, conditions with your predicted grades then they just don't give you an interview offer and you should always strive to get an interview offer first based on your application. But there are generally two types of interviews for medicine. So the MMI and the panel interview. Most of the schools now use MMIs, multiple mini interviews. So as the name suggests, it usually consists of a maximum of 10 different stations. And each station is an interview that's around 10 minutes that are judged individually. The stations are different based on the skills and knowledge that they're looking for. And they're more creative in the sense that there's role playing involved to look for necessary skills that a doctor should have, including judgment and prioritization and such. The other type is the panel interview, which are your traditional interviews. One applicant facing two or more interviewers in a sort of Q&A slash dialogue scenario. Much fewer unis now use the panel interview, including Oxbridge as the major stakeholders. Like any other subject, Oxbridge Medicine usually has one to two interviews, typically lasting 25 to 30 minutes long, with two interviewers each asking around a specific topic, occasionally giving hints to get to know your mind and academic potential. The Oxbridge interviews are always, always academic, and they want you to demonstrate your passion for the subject, so you can prepare for that by reading around the subject and stay up to date. They also want you to show your thought process, so tell them what's on your mind and think out loud. Essentially, all that is to mimic a supervision scenario so that they can assess your potential to learn using the method. And that's the end of this very long video. Uh, I assure you that everything in this video was absolutely necessary. I hope it was helpful and that it gives some sort of guidance to those who are going to or interested in applying to medicine via UCAS. I'll leave any relevant useful links in the description down below. And if you have any ideas, thoughts or questions, then pop in the comments. Be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye!